And welcome once again to Flashpoints. I'm Bob Ward. Joining me, Juan Zarate, our national security analyst. Juan, good to see you as always. Bob, great seeing you. Let's talk about what happened or didn't happen with the Iran nuclear negotiations. Deadline has come, it's gone, and now we have a new deadline. Yeah, we have uh, now the extension, the second such extension of the Iranian nuclear talks. The negotiators in Vienna, to include Secretary Kerry, were unable to conclude a final deal. I think this was anticipated. I think that, as we talked about, the tea leaves suggested yeah, that... who's surprised? Yeah, that the major issues were not going to be resolved by uh, November 24th today. And so uh, the best solution, I think, uh, the alternate solution, was the extension of the deadline. Seven months, Secretary Kerry has talked about trying to get the political issues, these fundamental issues resolved in four months. The one thing they want to do is not lose the momentum of any progress they've made. Uh, you know, everyone going back to their capitals, the air being let out of the balloon, and then they've got to reconvene again. So I think you're going to see an intensity of focus through the holidays to try to get gain some momentum and march toward an agreement sometime uh, in the winter. Now, both sides said that significant progress was made on some key points. Do we take it at face value? Well, I think there probably was some progress, and you can't deny that they were uh, talking around some key issues. The fact that they were talking, for example, about the number of centrifuge systems is important. Uh, the fact that they were talking about the sequencing of how sanctions were to be unwound, that's important. Uh, the fact that they're they talking about the timetable for this agreement. Keep in mind that the joint uh, plan of action uh, did not had an expiration date for uh, the final agreement, and so they had to talk through that. So no doubt they were talking about creative solutions, the role of Russia in taking some of the enriched uranium, and the rest. The problem, though, Bob, as you've noted and I've talked about, is the fundamental issues of Iran's nuclear capacity and what that means and the ability to verify it, how the sanctions are unwound, and the timetable all are still at play, and those are the fundamental issues, and both sides have not uh, had a meeting of the minds. There's so many potential wild cards here, and it's, it's just impossible to know what's going to happen, but we have a Republican Congress now. Uh, what's to say they don't come back in January and say, you know what, we're going to turn up the sanction screws a little bit. Th this could get really interesting, because if we start laying on new sanctions now in the middle of these negotiations, that seems like an ender to me. Well, and, and this has been the administration's point all along, which is why uh, Senator Menendez and the Democratic uh, Senate has not gone forward with additional sanctions, even though those, that sanctions legislation is there. And I think that you're going to see both Republicans and Democrats explore the idea of conditional sanctions. That is to say, passing legislation that says if Iran does not agree to a deal, further sanctions will be in place. The reason is they are worried that any further delay will simply contribute to the further lessening of pressure on Iran and that at the end of the day it's going to be very hard to ratchet up the pressure again. And so they want to temper the market, they want to send the right signals. The problem, as you indicated though, what does that do to the diplomacy? Secretary Kerry, the administration will say, don't do it, that's going to be disruptive, but you're going to have a Congress that wants to do something. Now, Israel would like to shut down this nuclear program altogether. They'd, they'd like to eliminate the program. They made that very, very clear. Yeah. But it also seems to me that the Iranians have said uh, that's a non-starter. They're going to retain the right, they say it's a right, to enrich uranium. The question is, to what level and how much can they store? Yeah. And, and the key question for the Israelis all along has been the nature and level of capacity and the ability to verify this because the Israelis are much more sensitive than we are to that point of breakout capacity. It's an existential question. And for them, it's yeah. an existential question. They're not worried about the moment that Iran actually has a nuclear weapon. For them, it's consequential when Iran has the capability to get a nuclear weapon. And I think that's the real difference. And, uh, you know, the Israelis have talked about the zone of immunity. At what point do the Iranians reach a point where they can break out regardless of what's to be done, regardless of airstrikes? And the Israelis still very much have in mind a very different timetable and framework. And so part of the trick here is, can you get an agreement that we're not only comfortable with, but that assures our Israeli allies, as well as our Sunni Arab allies, who don't like the Iranians and don't want them to have a nuclear program, that this is good enough and that we're going to be able to verify it. That's really tricky, and that's part of the reason we haven't had a resolution very yet. Very hard to be optimistic, got to be honest, right? 
Well, the fact that we're still talking is, uh, is there, there's always optimism and hope there. Uh, but the reality is uh, the Iranians want a nuclear program. They're going to continue to develop it. Uh, and we've got a sanctions program that we want to continue to use to pressure them. And how you square that circle is why we pay the diplomats the big bucks, and that's why we have another extension. They are earning their money for sure. Warren, right. thanks as always. Thank you, Bob. And thanks to you for watching Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr. We'll see you again next time.